This week's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So Paul, what do you think of the weather? Beautiful, isn't it? It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, look at this. Oh, let's have a look. Let's have a turn around. Oh. Tropical. <laughs> temperate. <laughs> temperate. Look at that. Oh, I love photographing in this weather. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Thompson and I have uh, come to our, <laughs> pretty much the only place we ever come to in Scotland, <laughs> Torridon. But we met up with a couple of legends here. Legends. <laughs> Hello. Photo legends. <laughs> Mr. Henry Turner and... Hello, how's it going? Ian. <laughs> Good to meet you. Yeah. Actually, the only reason we, we came down up here is because they've got a, a place to stay and I didn't want to camp in the van, so... <laughs> <laughs> got a, nice, got a ni nice place to stay. And uh, so true as well. went out last night for a bit of haggis and uh, I'm still feeling it this morning. It was rich. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, yeah, it was a little bit creamy and rich. But um, yeah, the weather is, is absolutely abysmal as usual, but we're going to see what we can find up in one of the areas that I've been to many, many times before. Uh, if you haven't seen uh, videos from, I'll leave a, a link up in, is it this? It's this corner, isn't it? I don't it? know which one it is. Yeah, up in this corner yeah, here. This corner and over the best. <laughs> but uh, I, don't have, I don't have high hopes today, but we'll see, we'll see what we can find. lying about the weather <laughs> it's pretty miserable but I mean look, look on the side here blue sky so you watch in a minute I'll be complaining that it's uh, too sunny <laughs> uh, the reason we came up with this section here is it's uh, I'm only here for a couple of days I just got back from the uh, the NEC show in Birmingham it was absolutely brilliant uh, met up with a lot of photographers that I've known for quite some time now uh, but never actually met in person so it was really great to meet all of those photographers and also uh, a big thanks to all of you all of you that came out uh, came out to the show and said hi uh, a lot of my viewers I really appreciate it it's really great to kind of put a face to some f familiar names that uh, always comment on my channel um, so yeah we're just here for a couple of days and uh, well, we're in my favourite type of woodland in Scotland, so I can see, going to see if I can get some photographs uh, in here. I don't know; it's not; it's pretty windy, and the light is flat as usual. But uh, let's see if we can come away with at least one or two photographs. Would be really great. Uh, I'm starting to learn now that uh, it's nice to have a bit of a theme in these videos rather than just me uh, hanging out making images. So the theme is pretty broad today. What do you think it is that uh, will improve your photography? Now there are some very obvious ones and maybe that's the only one that you really need to know and that is time out in the field is pretty much the only thing that's going to really uh, enable you to improve on your craft but uh, I'm going to ask these guys uh, Paul, uh, Ian and Henry what they think uh, you need to improve your photography and uh, I'll eliminate the obvious one uh, I'd love to hear your comments on this because I think a lot of people do str struggle with their photography especially when you're first starting out um, so it's nice to know kind of where you guys are at and perhaps what's helped you with your uh, with your photography so give me a write, write your comments down below let me know uh, your thoughts on this okay so apart from the obvious tip of getting out more in the field to improve your photography one of the tips that I would like to give is return 
to the areas that are close to you. And I mentioned this a number of times in various videos, but I really believe that your best photography is going to come from those areas that you uh, have that are locally and you can return to over and over again. And even if they aren't local, returning to an area will often yield different types of photography. Now, last time I was here with Paul, the light was really nice, and I got a, a photograph of this waterfall that I quite like. The light is very different this time, but I've decided to try and find a different angle. So I've gotten down lower to the water level here of this river, and I'm gonna shoot across. Now, it would be really nice to get a bit closer, uh, but I think it might make a great shot just as an overall wide angle shot. And the reason why I say that is because we have some pretty heavy winds this morning and everything is blowing around like crazy. So if you have everything quite small in the frame, then that will kind of mitigate that movement a bit. All right, well, I had high hopes for this photograph, but I think it fails on so many different levels. Now, there are elements in, in this, obviously, that uh, I really enjoy, but the things that really drew me to the scene just get lost. And some of that has to do with weather, and some of it has to do with, not, with just not observing what's going on. Uh, as an example, this tree in the background here is beautiful, but it's lost its separation because it's really blended in with the mountains behind. The waterfall is also quite hidden, which kind of draws me to the fact that perhaps I should have moved over to the right more. Uh, this whole section here uh, is very busy and just gets lost. There's boulders behind one another, so there's absolutely no separation. So this was very, of course, the, the first shot of the day, uh, but definitely could use some improvement. Simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. Okay, this is probably better than the last composition, but this still has some of the problems that the last composition had. The biggest problem is just the light. Uh, it's not very interesting. It's quite flat, so, uh, but you know, got to do the best you can. But I do like the composition. Now, I must admit, my camera bag is over there, about 30 feet over there. And uh, I need a different lens, but uh, it was a bit sketchy getting over here, so I'm trying to debate whether to, uh, inside my head of course, whether to leave my camera here and go for my camera bag, or just pack up and go over there, get the camera bag, and then, <laughs> and then come back. Because uh, we all know what happens if you leave your camera standing on its own next to a river. As you can see here, I've moved over to the right, and now we have a better view of the waterfall, and also more separation of this little tree up here. So there's no confusion about where it should be or what's behind it and all the busyness that goes with that. I've also tried to frame uh, the, that area the best I can with this birch in the foreground uh, because it was there, there was nothing I could do about it, so you have to kind of incorporate it. It's all about compromises. So I do think this is a much better angle You'll also notice that the, tr the uh, boulders are now much more defined and there just seems to be more order in all of that chaos. Unfortunately, uh, I did do a bit of uh, focus stacking, but obviously not enough because if we zoom in on this area here, you can see that it's out of focus. This is a, a, a finished processed file and I didn't take another image or a sharp image for this section here doesn't matter too much because it's quite dark. Also, uh, I decided to let the trees blur out. It was very windy uh, and I did take some photographs where the trees are sharp and I was going to blend those in, but it just proved to be too difficult. And in the grand scheme of things, as I look at this, it's not really that big a deal. And then finally, this photograph here, which I think is probably the best of the three, in that I've simplified things to the bare minimum for this scene. You'll notice that I've eliminated that rock that was out of focus. The boulders I felt didn't really need to be there. All I wanted to show was the waterfall, the nice little tree in the background, the silver birch in the foreground somewhat framing that area, and some of the foliage on the right side. So Again, it's about compromises, but it's also about eliminating things that don't need to be in the scene. Just keep simplifying to the point where you think you have something uh, that has just enough information in there 
to make it more compelling. All right, so I've been talking a little bit about uh, how to improve as a photographer, especially when you're just starting out. So all you guys know that, or you should know that, probably the, the best way to improve in any skill, not just photography, is just to go out there and actually do it. Yeah. But uh, I'm gonna ask these guys what skill um, they think would be a good one to, um, to pursue in improving as a photographer. So go for it. So I think for me, I'd have to mention gear. Like, it's very easy to obsess over gear. Get yourself a camera that you can shoot in manual mode with, and then get out and about with that. Just try not to get caught in that trap. I think that is really, really important. I think it's just really important to say, I know it's not necessarily like a skill in itself, but you know, you want to get out and learn composition, learn about light, subject, yeah, get a camera that you can shoot in manual mode with and just be done with it, like, enjoy using it. So what you're saying is just go out and get a Fuji GFX 100. Exactly, make sure you've got at least 5,000 <laughs> British pounds, you know. <laughs> there you go, thanks Henry. Yeah, no worries. Okay, it looks like the weather's coming in again. <laughs> Keeps changing very quickly. But, you know, that's the nice thing about this area is one minute it might be snowing or raining. I can see it coming in behind me here. Uh, and then, it eases off and you'll have sun come through, so that's how you get the good light for the mountains. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just slowly heading back to the car, but I might be heading back quicker than uh, I anticipated. Uh, down here on the floor here, there's some beautiful uh, lichen rocks. So I took a few quick shots of that uh, before the rain hits me. I want to take this opportunity to thank Squarespace for continuing to support my channel and sponsoring this week's video. My favorite feature of my Squarespace website is the ability to quickly and efficiently update a gallery or page from my desktop computer or on the fly using the Squarespace app from my smartphone. Loading multiple images onto a page is quick and allows changing a page or design quickly and elegantly without any coding knowledge. Sound interesting? Why not head on over to squarespace.com and try it for free? If you like the platform, use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. <laughs> All right, Ian. Hello. I have to ask you a big question. Go for it. If you're just starting out as a photographer, what advice would you give newbies or people that haven't been doing it for very long uh, in terms of how to improve as a photographer? Now, Henry's already already uh, said that perhaps not don't fuss over gear, and the obvious one is you know just get, get out, out more. Yeah, yeah. So, what would you recommend? Well, I think it's a great thing to look at other photographers' work take a look at what they're doing and try to analyze their compositions. But ultimately, you know, shoot from the heart, you know, what's important to you and ultimately you'll grow then as a photographer. And I think whatever inspires you will, you know, lead to success at the end of the day. So that's my top tip, yeah. Look at other people's work and shoot for yourself. Okay, so look at my work especially. Yeah, Adam's work, yeah, don't look at mine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Ian. No worries. I think this might be the best shot of the day. Let's just, uh, Get the exposure right on my face here. Um, the silhouettes here are beautiful. So you've got the lock in the background with the lights kind of dancing around and then these uh, Scots pine in the foreground silhouetted. So it's just a matter of uh, finding some separation and um, some nice kind of, uh, I don't know, compositions. I, I, uh, I quite like the one where you have a branch on the, on the taller one there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and it, uh, 
it has a little branch that kind of cradles the top of the, the little tree behind it. So, um, sorry, there it is there. Uh, I quite like that. And of course we have the, the beautiful light moving across the lock there. Yeah, it's really, really is quite lovely. Uh, I'll do some panos and also try to include as much of the tops of the trees as possible. I'm cutting out the, uh, the foreground because um, I, I, whoops, I don't think it really adds anything to the, to the composition. So the foreground here in the shade, I'm cutting that out. I'm just uh, cutting it off right at the bottom where the lock hits the, uh, the trunks of the trees. All right, I'm going to put Paul on the spot right away. All right, Paul, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Us. Right away. Uh, so today I've been trying to get tips uh, about um, how to improve as a photographer. Yep. And the obvious one is, well, just get out and shoot. I mean, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. And then one by uh, from Henry was, uh, what was Henry's again? Oh, yeah, don't, don't fuss over gear. And then Ian's was... Uh, study the work of other photographers, especially my work, because that will really inspire and, and get the <laughs> creative juices flowing. Um, so do you have any tips or a tip that you would like to add to that? Yeah, so I would think mine would be is to find a location where you can practice, basically. Somewhere you can keep returning to, somewhere you know really well. So if the light changes, you get different atmospheres, like fog, for example, or whatever it might be, you can return to a location and know what you're gonna shoot. And I think that's really important to help you learn and develop. That's a good one. All right, cheers, mate. No worries. All right. Well, not the best conditions today, but we did have a lot of fun, and it was really great hanging out with uh, Ian and Henry and Paul. Um, now, Paul and I are hanging out in Scotland for another couple of days before I have to head back to Canada. I think we're going to head over to Sky the Isle of Skye and uh, pick a couple of locations there, or at least one anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give us the old thumbs up. That's always appreciated. And also, uh, I thought I'd just mention my book, uh, Land and Light. Uh, it is for sale, pre-sales. I'm trying to raise enough money to get that printed. And I'm hoping that it will be shipping, hopefully by the end of June. So if you're interested in that, please head on over to my website where you'll find all the details. The website is adamgibbs.com. All right, guys, thanks ever so much. And uh, until the next video, bye-bye.